What's up, fellas? We're doing this live on the Alpha Male Secrets channel. It's more like a test. It's the first time I'm streaming on the uh, Alpha channel, so let's go for this. Who's awake right now? Let's see who is awake. Who's up? Could be nobody. Streaming live here. Seeing who's up. Seeing who's awake. One, two. Who's up, man? What up, Hunter? Hunter Wheeler. I never stream on this channel, guys. I'm just doing it for a test tonight, so whoever's up here, I'm up. JT, he's up. What time is it where you guys are? It's like one in the morning here in Las Vegas, Nevada. What up, Chris? What's going on, my man? It's funny, I'm in this casino, like this random casino in Vegas, and uh, one of my uh, followers, Josh, I just met him tonight, but he just recognized me. I was like walking to the bathroom, and he's like, hey, it's you. I'm like, yeah, it's me. He's like, what are you doing in here? I'm like, chilling. All right, 4 a.m. in Australia. Okay, guys, we're, we're going to do this for 30 minutes, man. Just doing this as a test and just to do a quick live stream on here to make sure it's working and uh, also enable a few buttons that YouTube is withholding until I do a live stream on this channel. So that's what we're doing. Have you driven the Corvette to Las Vegas? Um, where did I... Did I take that Corvette to Vegas in the past? No, I took it somewhere. I took, I've taken the Corvette on road trips. Oh, I took it to Arizona. I haven't, I don't think I've taken that to Vegas yet. Uh, I was thinking about taking the DeLorean sometime, but I need to charge the air conditioning in that car. And it uses, you guys are familiar with older cars. It uses uh, not, the, not the new air conditioning that they're putting in the new cars, but it uses an air conditioning called R12. So I have to go to somebody who still have, who still carries R12 AC. It's like it blows colder than the aircon that exists in cars today. But um, yeah, they banned it. They banned it uh, nationally because I guess it's bad for the environment. Yeah, right. Everything's bad for the environment if it could fill like fill uh, politicians like coffers with our money, right? Live pickup. That's right, man. Yeah, I just did. A, I just did a cold approach less than an hour ago, man. And um, yeah, I mean, it's it's very like if you're thinking of coming out to Vegas to, for anything to do, game or pickup, it's slim pickings right now. Like slim pickings. Most people are here with their boyfriend and shit like that. Um, what up? Hello. Hey, what's good? Thirty three secrets, bro. Yep. Uh, bro, will you get married before you die? Um, thought about it, yeah. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of uh, uh, prenuptials in place for that. Do I gamble? Uh, yeah, I gamble for fun. I don't gamble, like, seriously. If you uh, go follow me on Instagram, I was, like, winning on a few machines. Um, what was I playing? Like, Monopoly, stuff like that. Cobra Kai, Cobra Kai. Uh, remember your weird hand gestures, yeah. R12, Jordan Simpson. You know what R12 is? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, man. It's hard to find somebody who has R12. I know they sell the cans on eBay. I was trying to buy some cans off eBay. Like, you could buy R12 on eBay, but you have to have, like, some state license or something. It's insane, so I just got to take it to somebody. Uh, 9.55 a.m. in South Africa. Man, it's morning time. Man, that's early. You're up early. Nice. I'm, I'm waiting for... Uh, I'm waiting for the the mask Gestapo to come. Like, where's the mask? Like, everywhere he goes. Like, where's the mask? I kind of get sarcastic with him sometimes, too. And I'm like, uh, whatever you say, doctor. Matt, don't stop vibing on YouTube. Uh, Bayou City Image. Hope you get your new YouTube buttons, man. Yeah, me too. I was like, hey, how come I don't have these buttons yet? And they're like, have you done a live stream, live stream on that channel? I'm like, I don't think so. So here we are. Uh, what are my thoughts on weed? Um, I, I really truly believe that they legalized it not only because it would bring more money into the economy for financial reasons, but also there's something more sinister behind that. 
uh, I believe that um, you know anything that disempower. I mean, if you look at most of the people who are the gender that smokes weed the most, it's predominantly male, right? I think it's like over 80% male who uh, who uh, generally consumes and smokes weed, uh, and they know that kills brain cells, it weakens your immune system, it lowers your testosterone levels. They're not stupid. I mean, anything to uh, weaken men that by default empowers women, they're gonna do. So it's unfortunate, but uh, yeah, I don't I don't smoke weed, but uh, um, I know people who do, and I tell them the same thing. And needs to get the AC charged up on the DMC. That's right, man. Yeah, it's like an oven in that car. It's got the original. How do I mask? Gestapo, man. That's why I'm hiding out over here. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I gotta get the AC charged on car. It has like the original art like the original Freon in it right now. And so when it gets like 80, I mean, it's pretty hot in LA. So when it gets hot, that car turns into an oven because it's made of stainless steel. I, I really literally feel like like a TV dinner in that car when it gets too hot. So I've only been taken out when it's cold. I didn't drive it to Vegas just because of that as well. Cause it's like, it's just the, the AC doesn't blow cold enough. Hey Matt, thanks for all your work and have a good day. Thank you, Emmanuel, appreciate it. Come back to Cobra Kai, Daniel San. Yeah, man. Uh, what's up with season three? Is season three out yet? I know season two was out, and then they moved it to Netflix, but I wonder if season three is out. Okay, JTRC, gonna come and see the fight. Nice, man. That's awesome. Uh, let's see. Okay, top chat. I don't even know how this works still. So. Uh, one o'clock in the afternoon from Mal Maldives. Nice, Nishan. That's right, man, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Zaki, weed can make you produce less testosterone, less track to the opposite gender, exactly. Yeah, there's just too many side effects of weed, I mean, Every, any drug you take is gonna have something positive about it, whether it's aspirin or, I mean, even just eating bad food, right? Like, I was feeling like eating nachos earlier and I decided not to. It's like, I wanted to and I was like, I thought about it, I'm like, I should get some nachos, man. And then I thought about it, I'm like, eh, there, there's too much downside, right? I'm like, I'm gonna feel sleepy, groggy. What if a you know, cute girl walks by, I'm not gonna be able to cold approach, I'm gonna be half asleep. I'm like, I like feeling energized, so, I mean, there are too many side effects. It's like taking drugs or, you know, uh, or doing weed or even smoking cigarettes, right? It's like, yeah, you get a little bit of benefit. It makes you feel good for a second, temporarily, but long term, there's too much downside. It's not a good ROA, ROI. Like, the ROI on it is horrible, especially with, like, weed, man. It's just... You know, I, I mean, I grew up with some friends who used to do weed religiously. They were kind of like, back in the day, we used to call them stoners. Remember you guys, remember that term stoners for you guys that are my age? I don't know, do they still use that term stoners? But uh, yeah, man, these guys like, they're like half of, half of, half the man they used to be from back in the day. I don't, I don't even recognize them anymore. All right, we got a $20 super chat from JTRC, hey man. That's awesome, appreciate it. Uh, Super Jack. JT, RC, everybody give it up for JT with the $20 Super Chat. Thank you very much, my brother. La Bamba, hey champ, I'm with you. Ditto, me too. Vertigo Zero, hey Vertigo man, what's up? You're on my live stream on the 33 channel. Um, I might do another one, guys. Uh, possibly. We'll see. 50-50 tomorrow on the Strip, depending on how my schedule is. And depending if I could, like, make it out to the Strip tomorrow. I have, like, so much work to do. Hey, man, how do you approach uh, to girls who wear a mask? Uh, I, I literally ask him to pull it down. I'm like, oh, excuse me, ma'am. You pulled your mask down real quick. And a lot of times, like, the ch like half the time, the girl, like, it's really, really tricky because when a girl's wearing a mask, like, she could look really, like, 
attractive, right? From the from here up. But then once she pulls down the mask, it's like, oh shit. So uh, I always ask a girl like, hey, miss, can you pull down the mask real quick? I pretend like I'm an authority figure, like I'm a security guard or something. The girl's like, oh, you know, and then if she's cute, I'm like, I just want to say hi. I thought you were cute. You know? And then if she's not attractive, which has happened like half of the time now, I'm just like, oh, okay, I was just joking. Right? I was just kidding. I thought it'd be funny. So most of the girls are like, oh, ha ha, you know. So that's how you do it, man. It's pretty simple. I mean, just ask her to pull her mask down. It's no harm, no foul. But I don't like going up to the girl, like, if she's wearing the mask, going, hey, oh my gosh, you're so cute, da da da. And then she, like, pulls the mask down, and then you're like, oh. I was just kidding. What are the drugs of your choice? I don't take any drugs at all. I don't even take aspirin, man. I don't even take aspirin, guys. Um, I literally had, like, a couple of migraine headaches last month. And I literally just slept it off. I like just put my I put myself to bed and I slept it off. As hard as it was to sleep, I slept it off. That's like the best way. I don't even like to take aspirin. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but I grew up on hate. I grew up by Hate Nashbury, right? And that that was like hippie land back in the '60s and '70s. Uh, so yeah, I grew up around like a lot of people who had like needles in their arms and just living on the street, homeless people. Uh, we would step over them, me and my dad. I remember, and my dad was like holding my hands, like, watch out for that guy sleeping on the street. And uh, these guys had like needles and shit. So I think at a young age, I was like, no, I don't ever want to do this. Um, so. Uh, uh, uh. How can I, uh, Rooks, Miss Starry, how, how can I stop pedestalizing women? Stop idealizing them. Stop putting stop elevating their value above yours uh, let's see uh, uh, uh. harsh suman how tall are you uh, tall enough to play quarterback in college so you guys watch American football average height of a of a uh, college quarterback What's your th uh, Sylvie? Okay, what are your thoughts on no fap? Uh, I go no fap. Yeah, I don't like to fap. Um, I can't even remember last time I did. To be honest with you, it's been that long. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's to me it's like eating junk food. Like I said tonight, I wanted to eat like some nachos and I chose not to. Just because it's like short term, it'll make you feel good. Just like any any pill, any drug. You know, food's no different, fapping's no different, right? Watching porn, it'll make you feel good for now, temporarily, but it's not worth the long-term side effect. Okay, variable X. Uh, okay, variable X, uh, it's kind of a intro, you know, uh, kind of an introspective question. Hey man, do you have any tips for dealing with the, the depression of losing all your work progress and getting into the grind again? Yeah, you know, when you feel like you're not moving forward in life, when you feel like you're constantly just stagnating or even going backwards a little bit, you will, and you, you start, when that happens, you start to feel um, feelings of hopelessness and that's where depression sets in. So anytime I've had, I've had the coach guys, that has been the reason. It's because they're stagnating, they feel themselves falling backwards, they're not making any progress, and then they feel hopeless. So that's what leads to them. Sir? Yeah. Real quick, can I get you a car on that? Oh, sure. I was just doing a live stream, so. Um, real quick, are those sperm samples? Yes. I have their, I have their best over here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all I need to know is what service do they provide? Oh, they're like ESA. ESA? Yeah. What do you mean by that? They are... Alright, who's still with me? Who dropped off? <laughs> okay, we got a super chat. Alright, we're gonna roll over here a little bit. Get away from the Gestapo. Um, let's see. Uh, 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 uh. 
Oh, we got a super chat. Hold on. I guess I got to do those first. Okay. Uh, from Fear Mino. Hey, Matt, have you dated Asian girls from Korea or Japan before? Uh, yes, I have. Also, love your work. Keep it up. Um, yeah. Yeah, those girls are pretty uh, traditional, still very feminine, uh, pretty conservative also for the most part. Um, so, yeah, I have. And uh, for me, preferably, I like Eastern European women. Uh, they tend to be like more my type, but it really depends on uh, what you're looking for. But yes, I have dated them. Um, nothing against them. Um, it just boils back to uh, what is your preference. I met MBA Nilami. This guy is always on my super chat. I love it. Hey, brother, how are you? Uh, hi, Matt. Thank you. My uh, brother, be a ship, not a sheep. That's right. Love you, man. My brother, Jacinth. Thank you for the $10 super chat, brother. I appreciate that. And let's get back to our questions. All right. Just going to wait for them to boot me out. <laughs> Matt, what's up? Are you doing? Been missing these live streams. Yeah, you got to. I just do it randomly, man. I just do it randomly. Uh, can you post your daily routine? Uh, the, the thing about my routine, guys, is it. I change my routine all the time. So as I mentioned before, like I used to work corporate job. So I had a routine I had to follow. And even at that job, I would try to mix it up as much as possible because I get bored easily. If I do the same thing every single day, I get kind of bored. And yeah, I kind of start to just like lose focus. So um, my routine changes every day. I, I don't like keeping a schedule. I mean, I know I have like work to do and content to shoot and stuff like that. That's as far as my schedule goes. And even then I, I shoot when I'm most like feeling like shooting. Um, I like shooting on the go a lot. I like shooting a lot while I'm outdoors. Um, yeah, I don't like shooting at home, for example. I just get bored at home. I don't know how a lot of these YouTubers sit at home with a microphone and they just sit in their garage or their room and they just shoot there all day. I'm like, I, I would get so bored, it's insane. Um, so yeah, my daily routine is just like, I don't know. Uh, when I feel like doing something, I do it. It's it's almost like working out. Like I know some guys are like, I, I go to gym Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, I go when I'm like feeling my body's feeling like going. So yeah, when I feel like going to the gym, I go. When I feel like working, I do that. If I feel like shooting, co shooting content, I'll do that. Um, sometimes it'll be two in the morning, I'm trying to sleep, can't sleep. And I feel like I wanna do some cold approach and I will literally put on some clothes I won't get too dressed up. I'll just put on jeans and maybe some, you know, tennis shoes. Or sometimes I'll even just put on some nice sweats. <laughs> and I'll just head out to like the next, the nearest venue. I'll walk into uh, some of my favorite bars or like hotel lounges that are open, and I'll just wander around, see if I can find a target that I could talk to. And even if there's nobody, I'm like just super attracted to. If there's a cute enough girl at the bar, it's like two in the morning. Um, I'll just sit there and talk to her, I, even if I'm not trying to get laid by her, just because I'm bored. And I just, you know, I like I like talking to, um, it keeps my skills up, just talking to uh, random females. Okay, what is a woman's agenda when she reaches out to you again? Uh, what is a woman's agenda? Dane Cologne, what is a woman's agenda when she reaches out to you again after breaking up with you? Uh, she wants validation. Don't give it to her. Don't give it to her, because as soon as she, get, she gets that from you, she'll just ghost you again for another few weeks. So yeah, don't give it to her. Okay. Uh, Vivek, Packer, you're welcome. Astro Taze, what up my brother? Um, cool. Sound engineer, what is TRT? I don't know, what is TRT? <laughs> Time to go, I can't keep up with a lot of these acronyms these days. I literally have to like Google it sometimes. Um, Arthur Arden, every married dude I know is henpecked. Uh, yeah, most guys are, man. Most guys are henpecked. I think we're gonna start, or I'm hoping to create a new generation of guys who get married that are not henpecked and that stand up for themselves. And I just hope to bring, like, to help bring masculinity back 
right? I don't want to sit here and go, I'm going to bring masculinity mm -hmm. back because it's, you know, that would just be like way too like egotistical. But, so, but I'm just hoping to be part of that movement and help guys to just realize that, you know, you don't need to let your wife carry your balls in her purse. Okay. Um, Jesse Galloway, I bench 315 and deadlift 500. Okay, cool. Oh, okay. I, I don't know. I missed your question. Um, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, I used to pay attention, like, how much I would bench back then. Um, shit. Uh, well, back when I was playing football, I think I was... What would I bench? Um, I want to say, like, 275, I, if I can remember correctly. That's when I'd really just go for, like... I was trying to put on bulk back then. Um, yeah, I'm much thinner than my playing days. I'm, I was, like... 190 back then now I'm like probably like 165 as far as weight goes uh, yeah as, as most of my football buddies back then we've all like dropped all that football weight so I'm not like uh, I don't work out for mass anymore um, I kind of have more like a swimmer's body runner's body which works for me I'm happy it you know I don't need to be that big anymore because I'm not going to be throwing a football anytime soon again Oh, yeah, Pinch Jerry. Uh, I don't know if you asked that question originally or who did about depression. Uh, Matt, continue talking about dealing with depression and how to get back into your grind. I'm dealing with this right now, please, and thank you. Yeah, again, a lot of uh, why you feel depressed and a lot of guys that I've coached through that, the reason why they feel end up feeling depressed is because they're stagnating in life and they're not, they don't feel like they're moving forward. So the biggest thing is you have to start moving in life. And I know it's hard, like, especially because most times when you're depressed, you're just sitting around and you're kind of staying indoors. And the more you stay indoors and isolate yourself, the more, um, the more you, uh, you start to, uh, you start to feel social anxiety whenever you do step out. Uh, I know that for personally from my experience when I went monk mode for three years and I didn't date I didn't do pickup I didn't do game and I went out there just trying to like I mean I was just trying to build my business so I locked myself in my place for three years and then when I f was starting to feel sick like I was like I need to get out I need to start going out that is when I started moving again and I noticed oh yeah I'm in there. yeah I was gonna yeah. remind you about the uh Oh, yeah, yeah. Video recording. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, that is the time when I started uh, getting out again because I was starting to feel sick. So, thank you. Uh, yeah, I was starting to feel sick, so I started moving again. And the thing that I noticed, and I had done pickup my entire life. When I, once I started going out again and I started going to venues, uh, I thought I would just snap right back into it. And I remember like the first week going to venues, uh, my, approach, my approach anxiety had come back, which I hadn't experienced in like over a decade. And it had come back. And I was like, whoa. You know, I was hesitating to approach. I was like kind of like nervous around... Uh, like large groups of people and uh, so that was something I had to work through but the more I kept going out and the more I just kept talking to people the more it went away and it was kind of hard it's kind of like not working out not exercising for a long time and just kind of like sitting still and then all of a sudden you like hit the gym you're gonna be super sore the next day so uh, little baby steps start moving start getting out there right start moving start getting yourself out there and the more you move around the more the more mojo you're gonna start building inside of yourself the more testosterone is gonna start coming back into your system and uh, the less reactive you're gonna be um, that's another thing I noticed with like guys who suffer from you know a lot of uh, like social anxiety um, sometimes they're very reactive um, so yeah you got to start moving around and you got to start getting out there you got to start socializing I mean that's really the best way to start 
like overcoming your depression is uh, socializing. Uh, because if you isolate yourself, it's just going to get worse and worse. You know? Um, yeah. Yeah, you can't isolate yourself. It's kind of like somebody who's like obese or really overweight trying to lose weight. And all they do is keep, you know, all they do is continue eating bad food. You know, at some point they got to just stop and they got to go in the other direction and maybe not, you know, maybe not go cold turkey and then, you know, just stop eating bad food, but little baby steps towards a healthier lifestyle, you know, but the biggest thing, if you have depression, you got to start moving. Um, it goes back to the three factors of happiness I talked about that I teach on my, you know, my premium alpha male secrets, which is uh, you got to have something to do something to look forward to and someone to love right and someone to love doesn't have to necessarily be like a girlfriend or anything like that but it could be family members it could be animal your animals you know it could be something like that so um, something to do someone to love and something to look forward to those are the three things that you need okay so hopefully that helps you and it doesn't help too right that society is like totally like emasculating men these days and is completely anti-male. Okay, Matt, what is the root cause of social fear? The root cause of social fear? Um, lack of reference experiences. That's the biggest thing. It's like approach anxiety. It really comes from lack of reference experiences because you don't, you fear the unknown. You don't know what to expect. But once you've been, you put yourself in these situations over and over, and then you experience them, it almost becomes like a video game where you know how things are gonna play out. The reason why I, I don't get approach anxiety anymore and I don't have fear to like walk up to girls is because I, I, I've seen every single response, reaction, rejection, um, you know that they could possibly throw at me there like nothing shocks me anymore so there's no fear there anymore it's like i know i'm gonna get one of these reactions from them and then it follows a pattern of behavior from there all right uh okay um all right why only 30 minutes uh it's about as much time as i have right now uh matt uh, actually as much time as my phone let me see how much time i have on here can't even see it. Oh, 12%. Jeez. Okay, she's not yours. It's just your turn. Exactly. Uh, I miss Vegas. I was supposed to be there with TJ. Says Billy. Billy the Buffalo. Yeah, she'd head back here. Um, Bell Bell. What do I think of Trump's chances for re-election objectively? Um, I, I wouldn't pay attention to these polls, first of all, because uh, they were saying the same thing about Hillary. If you watch on my 33, Se 33 Secrets channel back in 2016, I predicted he was gonna become president before he was president. And this is, I mean, you should see the comments on that before he actually became president. People were calling me an idiot. You don't know what you're talking about. Stick to pick up, da da da. You don't know politics. And I was like, I know he's gonna win. I knew it, I predicted it. And I'm like, I'm gonna leave this video up. And sure enough, he won. And I mean, everyone around me too was like, Nope, Hillary's gonna win. I mean, CNN was saying like she had a 90, was it like a 99%, 96% chance of winning the presidency like the night before the election? I was laughing my ass off. Uh, so now the polls are doing the same thing. Um, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't listen to the full polls, first of all. Um, second of all, it's, it's you know, there's a lot, it's, it's a little more complex before because you know, you have the other party like constantly injecting race into everything. It's like, dude, really? Everything? Everything has to be about race? Really? I'm like, shit, you know, it's like, you don't buy a car from somebody? Oh, they're racist. It's like, Jesus Christ, is that really the world you want to live in? I mean, when I grew up, I mean, I played sports my entire life. Um, I went to like a mostly black high school. So, I mean, you know, because we had the best football team. So I went there purposely because I was trying to get a scholarship and I wanted to play around the best athletes. And you know what? There was never any, like, yeah, th these things were never even talked about. It's just like, okay, he's a cool guy. I, I don't know. I've always ba I've always judged people based on their merits and who they are, their content of their character. Uh, I don't judge people on their, like, sexual preference or their skin color or anything like that. 
and I don't think most people do, at least most people I know. Um, sure, you're going to have like individual racism every here and there, but is, is there like systemic racism? Is it built in everything? No, no. Um, okay, Prakash Kumar with the super chat. Thank you very much, my man. I appreciate it. Uh, let's see what you got to say here. Uh, you made me forget my ex and get me red pilled. Now I'm focusing on my weight loss. Good for you. You are a major influence. Can't thank enough. Awesome, man. That's that's awesome. Okay. Glad to help. All right, let's take a few more. Uh, Uh, okay, let's see. Matt, is it okay to be in a strong home if I find a woman? Yes. Uh, is it okay? Sagar, Joshi, Matt, is it okay to be in a strong, healthy relationship if I find a woman who is also wants a steady, strong relationship and a happy married life? Um, if you find a girl like that and that's what you want, yeah, absolutely, go for it. You don't have to do pick up or game. I mean, that's not. It's not for everybody. You know, I don't suggest this lifestyle for everybody. Um, Really, and most of the guys that I coach are just looking to create more dating options for themselves, hotter, more attractive, more younger women. Uh, that's what I help them do, is bring like higher, like better looking women into their lives, basically. Just kind of like raise the bar and uh, so that they have like, you know, a girl to choose from because a lot of these guys want to do what you do. They just want a relationship. They don't want to be like perusing the venues like I do every week. Um, I just have I, I just enjoy talking to new people that's just me but if that's what you want to do then yeah there's um, you don't need to you know go out there and do pickup like for the rest of your life or anything like that uh, where am I a hotel I don't know I'm at like some random casino right now because the strip was like crazy packed crazy busy I could I was like trying to get from like literally took almost over 20 minutes to go one block on the strip. I was like, I'm done, turn. And I'm like, I'm just going off the strip. Uh, okay, Pincherry. Okay, so last question, Matt. Should I continue working in a restaurant job or should I look for a different profession? Profession, love you, Matt. You saved a young buck to continue living. That's awesome, man. Glad to hear it. Um, what does your gut tell you? Do you like working at this restaurant? Do you enjoy working there? Do you like the people you work with? Um, do you see a future there, right? Uh, I worked in a restaurant uh, way back in the day. I worked at Mel's Drive-In actually in San Francisco. I was a soda jerk. I was the guy making the milkshakes. Then I was a host. And then I like got promoted to waiter at one point. Um, but after, it, there was like a limit. Like there's only so much you can make there. And I was like, I want to move on. So I moved on to Macy's and I started selling women's shoes. I made more money. Um, and it was just a different atmosphere, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I just, usually, I mean, what I would say just you do is just follow your gut. Like if you're not happy there, then definitely move on because that's probably contributing to your, uh, depression, right? Obviously where you work, you're spending 40 hours a week there. So you're spending a lot of time there and a lot of time with those people. They're like a second family. So if you don't like any of them or you don't like being there, then yes, definitely move on. Uh, but if you're happy, then, you know, you can work there as you continue moving up in the world. Uh, hello, Matt. Uh, how financially your life became after understanding women and dating them? Says Kishore Ganesh. Uh, the thing about pickup and game that I got, a lot of guys don't realize is um, it causes you to become highly self-aware. So it causes you to really learn about yourself, who you are, what you like, what you don't like. Um, this is where a lot of guys, who, when they hear like pickup, pickup artists, they just immediately think of something like negative, like, oh, it's manipulating women. And it's not like not, dude, it's not even about women. It's about you and your journey and getting to know yourself and becoming self-aware. And uh, so the more self-aware you become, the easier it is to get rich, to be honest with you. Um, because you know who you are, you know what you're looking for, you know uh, what your strengths are, most of all, you know what your weaknesses are. 
and you can take advantage of those things, which is what I did. Like once I really dived deep into pickup, I realized I'm like, oh, I have a talent for something. I can use this to build a business. I can use this to get healthier, which I did. I could use this to become a better person. You know, I could use this uh, to help family, you know, guys around the world, all this other stuff. So um, yeah, it, in the sense that uh, game helps you become self-aware, um, it will lead to you becoming financially in a uh, much better position than you are now. Uh, okay. Okay, variable X, good question. Matt, how long do you think you should put effort into a new job or business before you know it will work or won't work for you? Um, again, it just goes back to trusting your gut. What does your gut tell you? I actually just did a coaching video on this. I don't, no, I haven't uploaded it yet, but I will. Um, and it's all about just what does your, what's your gut feeling about this? How do you feel about this? Um, do you feel like it can potentially go? I told you guys, like when I left corporate America, I tried to start like an SEO business because I was following Alex Becker way back in the day. And he was like, start an SEO business. You'll make globs of money. And I tried to do that. And I sunk a lot of money into doing that. And yes, I was able to make money from it. It wasn't anything life changing. It was just enough to kind of scrape by. But uh, and I could have built it further. But I was like, I hated doing it. I hated waking up and putting effort into it. I hate, I just hated everything about it. I didn't like it. I was bored a lot. I didn't look forward to doing it. Um, and really I, what led me back to game and pickup was like, I was, I was doing that in my free time anyway. And I was like, I enjoy doing this. Guys were like reaching out to me and wanting to learn from me. And I enjoyed teaching them. And I was pushing aside my actual business to go out and take guys out. So I'm like, I should just stay, stick with game. I'm like, I enjoy it more. I, I love doing it. I can't wait to get up in the morning doing it. So that's how you know. It's like when it's something, I've talked about this in my 40, 44 Alpha Male Secrets program, is uh, is um, it's part of finding your path and purpose. You gotta, you gotta be able to identify what your talents are, what you're naturally good at, and what you can become one of the best in the world at. Because that's how you will be able to build a business around that and compete with the other other guys who are in the uh, who are the best in the world as well okay let's take a couple more guys before I sign out I've got like 5% phone battery here uh, okay Jeff Seymour Matt do you think Pelosi does a good job managing things in San Francisco uh, no um, I I mean I was born and raised in San Francisco she, so she's been there the entire time Thing, funny thing about Pelosi is like she lives in this like I mean she lives in this 10 million dollar mansion in San Francisco this gigantic mansion in San Francisco and there are guards around it she has a fence around it and then here she is talking about no walls no borders oh you know and uh, yeah it's like dude are you serious and like uh, economic equality for everybody and I'm like dude you live in a 10 mil million dollar mansion at the top of the hill in San Francisco are you kidding me it's you know with armed guards around there who are you talking about walls and shit like that get out of here so yeah I don't like the hypocrisy of the uh, of politician I don't like politicians period you know they just lie too much and they just you know they're they're too much like car salesmen so yeah Okay, we're gonna, let's see how much time I got here. 4%, guys, gonna wrap up in a couple of minutes here. Uh, okay. Um, okay, cool. Thank you guys for coming on tonight. I really appreciate it. You guys who uh, threw the super chat, I appreciate that as well. Um, I'm going to try to stream tomorrow on my 33 Secrets channel. So if you want to join us over there, I'm going to try to stream from the strip. It's crazy right now. I don't know why people are out there like, you know, it's not even summer right now, but shit ton of people out on the strip. So I'm going to try to stream from the strip tomorrow on my 33 Secrets channel, uh, probably around like, who knows, maybe around like 10-ish. Uh, I'm going to try to. So if you want to join me over there tomorrow, and you have questions, uh, feel free to load them up because we're going to do it from the strip. And uh, I guess that will be it. I'm just trying to catch, see if there's anything 
Anything else I need to answer? Ali, Ali L. Hey Matt, just want to say thank you so much for being that go-to place when things just don't make sense for me anymore. Any advice for a 26-year-old male entre entrepreneur? Uh, yeah, keep going, man. Keep going. Um, keep plugging away. Throw. I mean, the thing about business ideas, guys, is you have to take like your five best, write down or come up with your top five best business ideas, throw it all up on the wall and see what sticks. Okay, don't just do one at a time. Throw like at least three, four, five up on the wall, your best ideas and see what sticks. Okay. Uh, all right, guys. So you're welcome. Words of wisdom. Awesome. Uh, sh last question uh, from Shahul Ahmad. Ahmed. Uh, sorry, Ahmed. Uh, will you have ch uh, children of your own uh, at some point? Um, probably not at this point. No. Um, I, I've mentioned this before. I had a much younger brother and sister that I raised uh, that were like almost 20 years younger than me that I raised when I was in high school, college. Uh, so I feel like I've already gone through the whole like raising children thing. I don't really need to have any of my own. Um, there's other things I wanna do than, you know, go to birth, like kids' birthday parties and school functions and parent teacher night. I just, you know, it's just not something that interests me anymore. I did that with them. So I feel like I've already done that. So, uh, but if you haven't yet, then, you know, maybe that's something you need to do. Uh, Okay, the mass police tack. <laughs> yeah, life's a beach. That would be funny if the mass police tackled them out of nowhere. It would go viral. So I would hope that I would catch that, you know, and it would go viral. And you know, if it did go viral, what people would be like, oh, that's staged. It's not real. Okay, so Norm, thanks for the Bible quotes. You're very welcome. All right, guys, uh, I am going to crash out here. Uh, let's see, super chat, any more? Okay, oh, I do have one more super chat. Uh, okay, Lookman, I think that, Lookman. Uh, can a man be high value with a corporate job or is it necessary to be your own boss? Yeah, you could absolutely be high value with a corporate job, right? Yeah, it doesn't matter. You don't need to have your own business for that. Yeah, you could totally be high value. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not even about your job. It's about you, right? You bring the value. Um, all right, sound engineer, until the next time, don't forget to smash the like button, guys. Hey, smash that like button. Smash that like button. Destroy it now for me. I would appreciate that much. Jordan Simpson, thank you. Jordan Simpson, thank you very much. Good night. Good night to everyone else. Well, okay. <laughs> what do you think? Um, that's it. That's it. So guys, join me tomorrow night on the, my 33 Secrets channel for the live stream. We'll try to do it around 10 if I could jump on. Not promising anything, right? But I'm going to try to make time for it, all right? So let's hit that tomorrow. Until next time, gentlemen. Good night. Have a good night. Signing out from Vegas. Vegas. And uh, we'll do it live on the strip tomorrow. All right? Peace. Love. Take care, guys. Bum bum.